In this video, we'll test different DIY rust removers and compare it to Evaporust. I'll also show you how to make a rust removing gel that performs better than Evaporust for a fraction of the cost, so make sure you stick around until the end. Let's go do stuff. Sure, vinegar can be an effective rust remover in some cases. The problem is that I don't want my apartment to smell like vinegar, and I don't like the taste of rusty nuts in my salad. Jokes aside, the main problem with a lot of DIY rust removers is volume. If I have something small, vinegar or even electrolysis work fine, but if I have something big, those methods quickly become unfeasible. No one wants to spend money on some overpriced rust remover like Evaporust. Well, I, I did. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so, it's free and that's a great price. By the way, I've seen a lot of theories uh, regarding what's the secret ingredient in this. It's triethanolamine phosphate. Anyways, I've cut some rusty rebar into smaller pieces, and in this video I will be testing a solution of citric acid, neutralized citric acid, the classic go-to DIY rust remover, vinegar. I'll also be testing hydrochloric acid and of course the evaporust. The citric acid solution I'm preparing is 100 milliliters of water with 10 grams of citric acid. I will be adding a small drop of dish soap to each solution except for the evaporust. The solution has a pH of about 2. The next solution I'm preparing is actually a recipe from Backyard Ballistics. From his testing it appears to be more effective than evaporust. I recommend you go watch that video if you haven't already. His recipe calls for 100 grams of citric acid and 63 grams of baking soda per liter of solution. This solution looks to have a pH of about 4 or 5. The vinegar is pretty straightforward, all I did was add a drop of soap. The pH looks to be around 2 or maybe 3. The next solution is concentrated hydrochloric acid. Again, this is pretty straightforward, uh, all I did was add a drop of dish soap. Unsurprisingly, the pH of this solution is around 1. The evaporust is advertised as safe for skin and eyes, so it should be pretty close to neutral. And yes, it appears to have a pH of about 6 or so. Here are some things we're going to look at to determine which rust remover is the best. Price, ease of use, and how effective it is, how corrosive it is to the underlying metal, and of course, safety.
this is how they look after only 5 minutes. As expected, not a lot has happened. The only exception is the hydrochloric acid which has already stripped all of the rust away, leaving the metal completely bare. This is the progress after 15 minutes. Some rust has started to flake off in the evaporust, but there is still a lot left as you can see. Interestingly, the citric acid in baking soda is roughly as effective as evaporust so far. The citric acid has done some damage as well, but not quite as much as the evaporust. The hydrochloric acid is happily eating away at the rebar. The vinegar is honestly a bit disappointing, there's hardly been any progress so far. So it's been 30 minutes and I would say the hydrochloric acid is the clear winner when it comes to rust removal. It has some other issues that makes it a bad choice, but nonetheless it's very effective if you're only looking for quick rust removal. Second place is the neutralized citric acid, followed closely by evaporust. In third place we have the regular citric acid, and the worst performing of them all is vinegar. I put the rebar back in solution and then I went to bed. The next day I washed them off and let them air dry. If you're planning on repainting something, you want a rust remover that not only removes the rust, but also prevents or limits the formation of new rust after it's been washed off. As you can see, most of the rebar re-rusted a bit when drying, but the two citric acid solutions performed the best. By far the worst performing one was hydrochloric acid. Off camera I continued to do a lot more testing, trying to figure out which formula and concentration works best when turned into a gel and so on. Anyways, let's make the rust removing gel. For 1 liter of gel, you'll need 200 grams of citric acid. Slowly add 125 grams of baking soda, and then top it off with water until you reach a volume of about 9 deciliters. Once the citric acid and baking soda has dissolved into the water, add around 10 drops of soap. The next step is to bring the solution to a simmer. Meanwhile, mix about 5 tablespoons of cornstarch with around 75 milliliters of cold water. Gradually add the cornstarch to the solution while stirring continuously. Continue stirring and adding the cornstarch until the solution begins to boil. You can then take it off the heat and allow it to cool before transferring to a suitable container. This makes a really effective rust remover, and I'll show it in action in just a second. But first, let's go over the costs. All of the ingredients are both readily available and cheap when bought in bulk. I'll have them linked in the video description. This is what you can expect to pay for one liter of gel. It comes out to be around $2.30 per liter or about 7 cents per fluid ounce. That's more than three times cheaper compared to buying evaporust. If the object you're de-rusting is small, you can simply drop it in the gel and leave it for a while. 
Another alternative is to first coat the object with gel and then wrap it up in plastic wrap. This works for both small and large objects as you'll see in just a second. The gel is easy to wash off and requires minimal elbow grease. It's also safe to handle with bare hands, although it's a bit messy. The best part is that, based on my experiments, almost no rust occurs after it's been washed off, even if you let it air dry, although I would still recommend to dry it off as quickly as possible. This is the result after only 10 minutes. If I were to use vinegar for something like this charcoal starter, I would probably need a couple of gallons at least, but with the gel I only need a fraction of that. I let this sit for around 15 or 20 minutes, seeing as it's quite rusty. I could probably have left it for another 15 minutes or so, as you can still see some rust, especially around the edges. But most of the other spots isn't actually rust, but rather some sort of heat discoloration of the metal. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you liked this video, please like this video, and don't forget to subscribe. Peace.